While CMYK and RGB are the Coke and Pepsi of the color world, lab color is not only a new method of color, it also takes a philosophically different approach to creating color. Photoshop itself draws on this mode when converting your image between RGB and CMYK. So let's talk about lab color. The first thing to discuss is it's not actually called lab. Most people, when they see the color mode, they pronounce it that way because uh, it's got a capital L and a lowercase a and a b. It's actually pronounced LAB, and the reason that is is because the L stands for lightness, and the A and B stand for two points on a graph. The reason that LAB color was created was because when printing out colors, or when describing colors, when creating colors on a monitor, RGB and CMYK modes are both really a set of instructions that either your monitor or a printing press then uses to reproduce a color. There's nothing in there that describes the look of the color itself. So the LAB color mode attempts to describe exactly what the color looks like so that later on we can recreate it device independently. There are a couple of interesting advantages that describing color in this way give us. The first is that we have control over the luminosity, which is the L, and the color independent from one another. So let me show you how this actually translates into an image. If we look over here, down at the bottom right, at the channels panel, you can see that I'm in RGB mode. Now this is the default mode for Photoshop. RGB is an additive mode, so each of these colors are being added together in varying degrees to create the colors that you see on the screen. What this means is that this black right here is actually a combination of red, green, and blue. If we jump back into the layers panel, and I'll switch back to RGB for the purposes of this next demonstration. Let's say we have an image like this one here, which is a little bit fuzzy. Maybe it's taken on an older camera, or maybe we just pulled it down off of the web from our Facebook after we've taken the image, and we want to clean it up a little bit. If we go into Filter and drop down to Sharpen and either Smart Sharpen or Unsharp Mask, for now I'm just going to use Smart Sharpen, we can actually decrease the amount of blur in this image. And the way we do that is just by dragging these sliders a little bit. So if we increase the amount, and then we increase the radius, you can see here things are getting a little sharper the further we go. The problem with your typical RGB or CMYK color space is that Photoshop is taking the calculations from the color information itself. So I'm about to drag this radius all the way up to kind of show you what I mean, and you wouldn't probably do this in real life, but the reason I'm going to do it is so that you can see exactly, in an exaggerated fashion, what I'm talking about. Over here, you can see that the colors start to bleed together. That becomes extremely prominent over here, where we're looking at the figure on the left, and you can see a little halo around him. I'm gonna hit OK here, then I'm gonna step back and paste that sharpened image over top of our normal image, duplicate layer zero, which is our background, and now I'm going to shut off that sharpened image and change the image mode again. Don't merge. Here's the first benefit. If we drop down right into the lightness channel, in the channels panel, we can, we can sharpen nothing but the lightness itself. So this is going to have the exact same settings that we just applied to the RGB channel. Hit OK. Click back up on LAB color. And now let's take a look at the differences that that gave us in the amount of sharpness. Here's the one that we just worked on, the LAB. And if I hide that, you can see the difference between that and the RGB. The LAB kept basically the same color information that was our, in our original without blending any of the colors together. You can especially see the difference if I zoom in here on the figure. You can see that the RGB starts to mix the colors, whereas the LAB color, all the same color information is being applied. The only thing that we've tightened up is the luminosity. The other thing we can do with LAB color, duplicate this layer again, drop it in the channels. We can actually work on the color information without changing the lightness. So if we come in here and then we drop down to image adjustments and hit curves, command or control M, I'm gonna bring this in and increase the contrast of the, the A component. I'm gonna do the same to B, command or control M, 
Pull that in a little bit. Hit OK. Go back to the overall color, and you can see this is insanely bright. These colors now really pop. If we drop the opacity on this and blend it in with the original image, we just liven up the image a little bit. On the same note, if instead of if instead of brightening the colors and bringing in the contrast, we were to lessen the contrast, it would effectively be we could effectively desaturate the colors without interfering with any of these solid blacks here. So let's go do that and take a look at what it gives us. I'm going to bring up the curves again. And again, all of this stuff I'm exaggerating just to show you what I mean. Eventually what you're going to want to do if you're messing with any sort of color correction options with LAB color is you're probably not going to want to go up this far and maybe there are a few other things you want to do with curves. Keep in mind, experiment with your images because there's no wrong way to do it and you never know what you're going to find through a little bit of experimentation. So we'll go back to the original image. You can see this is seriously desaturated. And again, we can blend this in with our original image to create different looks. So that's all for the LAB color. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.